Hi, and welcome to episode number 30 of the weekly Google Cloud Platform podcast. I am Frances Campoy, and I'm here with Mark Mandel, my colleague. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, Frances, how are you feeling? You've been on a bit of a long journey. Yeah, a little bit sore, you know, like biking 600 miles. Apparently, get let makes you tired. It's uh, weird. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah, who knew? Who knew? Um, very happy to be sitting on chairs that are slightly, <laughs> slightly bigger than the one on my on my bike. <laughs> yes, very happy about that. Uh, and today's episode thirty, uh, which is pretty good number. Yeah, very, very, very big number. Thirty already. I'm proud of you, man. You've done a good job. Yeah, you too. Thank yeah, you. Not as Thank good you. as mine, but pretty good. Uh, yeah. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll try. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring my game up. I'll bring my game yeah, up. Yeah. And uh, and to celebrate that we have uh, episode number thirty, we're actually bringing not one, not two, but three guests today. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to have three different uh, product managers, actually uh, two product managers and one technical program manager. Uh, so Q Titievsky from uh, Google Cloud PubSub, Eric Anderson from Google Cloud Dataflow, and Tino Tereshko from Google BigQuery. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, basically how you can do big data anal analytics for mobile. Yeah, so there's actually a gaming solution that you could probably apply to several other things that on yeah. our website that we can go to. Um, and we're going to step through that and sort of look at all the different pieces that are enable that and, and yeah. why you should use those. So we're going to be talking a lot about big data uh, during the main content, but also during the question of the week. The question of the week is going to be about BigQuery. But before we even start with those, we have the cool thing of the week. And guess what? It is about BigQuery too. It's another BigQuery point. Yes, nice. it's BigQuery everywhere. And and I'm actually pretty excited about this one because uh, I used to do a lot of um, a lot of SQL, and as you might know, uh, Google uh, BigQuery supported a dialect of SQL that was very similar to SQL, but mm. there were some slight differences. Uh, well, the latest version has standard SQL now, so if you know SQL, it's you just know BigQuery now. So. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I know when I was using it, like especially like things around joins and stuff like yeah. that, and you try and do it, and then you'd be like, oh, I can't, and then you'd read the docs, and they're like, oh, just add this extra special little thing that's just extra special. Yeah. And if you didn't know what it was, you were kind of stuck. So now everything uh, is just standard SQL, which is great. I'm very that's excited about awesome. that. Uh, there's also uh, support for IAM. Uh, so we did an episode not that long ago about it, Identity and Access Management. So uh, you have a finer control on who can access and who can do what on BigQuery. And then you were pretty excited about the last one, the time-based table partitioning. Yeah, so you no longer have to actually manually span out your like partition, say like this is like January state of February, etc. Uh, BigQuery is going to do that for you out of the box, which just means it's a little less work that you need to do. Yeah, and less work is always better. <laughs> yes. Cool. Cool. Um, I, the, the episode today is going to be kind of long. So why don't we go and talk directly to our friends from the big data? Sounds good to me. Cool. We are joined today by three product managers talking about gaming analytics platform. Uh, we are joined by Kira Titievsky, Eric Anderson, and Tina... Tino Tereshko. I think I got that vaguely right. Was that, <laughs> was that vaguely close? Vaguely you got right. It. <laughs> Excellent. Out of the I, most people. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty excited because this is the most number of people we've been interviewing on the podcast ever. So it's going to yep. be a bit interesting. Um, but I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to go pretty well. So before we get stuck sort of into the meat of it, um, why don't we sort of get you all to tell us all a little about yourselves. I'm going to go uh, based on the order that I have in the document. So Kier, do you want to go first? Tell us a little about yourself and who you are. Hi there. I'm Kier Titievsky, and I'm the product manager for... Google Cloud PubSub. Uh, I've long been trying to figure out how exactly to explain why I'm excited about it. And it finally struck me today. It's that uh, it made networking asynchronous. It's fast, but it's asynchronous. Um, you know how uh, when the first, the first kind of network, you could just uh, call somebody. Um, you can call somebody on the phone, and if they were there, you could have a synchronous conversation. Um, if they were not there, you were stuck. Now... Email came along and it made that whole thing asynchronous, right? You could just instantly shoot somebody an email or an instant message. And um, it was there if, they, if they're if they on the other side in a second. If they're not, it could wait for them for days. PubSub did the same thing for just general networking, shipping data around. Um, so that's, um, that's what I'm excited about. Cool. And what is your location right now? I'm just curious about how many people in different places we have. Oh, this is exciting. Uh, we're, I, think, I think we've got... 
the entire country represented. Uh, we've well, <laughs> the, the corners, right? I'm in New York today. Cool, cool. All right, Eric. How about yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Eric Anderson. I'm a product manager on Dataflow. Uh, this is, uh, if it, if it's interesting, I've been at Google for three years now. Uh, started on a little data science team, um, and I've been on Dataflow for maybe a year and a half. Let's see. I'm based um, normally in Mountain View. Uh, on my way to New York for some conferences, and um, currently in Salt Lake City, Utah. Cool. Excellent. And Tino, yourself? Hi there. I'm uh, Tino Tereshko. I'm a technical program manager for uh, BigQuery, which is uh, uh, Google's um, serverless, fully managed uh, petabyte scale analytics data warehouse. Uh, BigQuery is used uh, widely at Google um, um, across all of the Google's organizations, and we have uh, lots of really exciting customers to speak of as well. Uh, and I'm based out of Seattle. I've been at Google for almost three years, and I've been on the BigQuery team for about a year. Cool. So uh, then, yeah, and then we are here in San Francisco. So San Francisco, Seattle, Salt, New York, New York, and Salt Lake City. Was it? Utah? That's right. Yeah. Utah. There Don't you forget. go. You left the nice. coasts, Eric. You left the coasts. <laughs> I'm all, it's like almost like a layover in between them, though. I'll, yeah. I'll be there shortly. Very cool. And we have then uh, we have PubSub, we have um, Dataflow, and we have BigQuery. What are the relationship across all of them? Yeah, so I mean, we're we're here sort of to talk about uh, sort of a reference implementation we've we've had on the website for a while, talking about building a mobile gaming analytics platform, uh, which is a solution people can go online. We'll have the link in the show notes for people available. Uh, do one of you three want to volunteer to sort of talk about what this is and how it works? It seems to kind of cut across all three of your segments. Sure, I'll go first, and you guys tell me when I get things wrong. Um, Sounds good. This is this is Kier. So. Uh, the the reason I got excited about doing this particular this particular podcast, aside from being a loyal listener, is is that I recently heard the um, the interview you guys did with the, with the gaming company. It was War of Dragons, right? Yep. Yeah. Yes, and and they were talking about their pipeline, um, which looked very much like our reference diagram, um, which you can find on on the Google Cloud site, site which um, looks something like this for for those of you who are not looking at the website or are listening, uh, it's, uh, it's a client, be, be it on your mobile phone or not, talking to a front-end server um, and then needing to hand over the data for processing to a set of three things. You push your pushy event data to Cloud PubSub, which then gets pulled into Dataflow, which, where it gets transformed, where it gets massaged, where you get where you um, enrich your data or strip what you don't need, and then you finally put it on the results in BigQuery. That's sort of a standard stack. Um, this just to just before you go any further, do you want to take a step back and say like, what sort of data are we take, talking about here? Um, the reference is is mobile gaming analytics, but like, can you give people sort of an example of what sort of data we'd be ingesting? Oh, absolutely. And by the way, I highly recommend um, those of you who are listening to to, to go back. I think it'd be two or three episodes um, to to hear a very detailed account of of how this works for this for for War of Dragons. But you're just talking about user events, right? Whenever somebody finds that coin, kills the dragon, you know they, their score goes up. They bought something. Um, as a mobile app developer or mobile game developer in particular, um, you are interested in, in in understanding how these events tie together, so you can start optimizing your game, right? So you, you're looking for those gems. Gems of, of little interactions at work are those that slow down your users. Um, in in a way, this is a sort of the same story you, that that you might um, be working on if you are just optimizing a site, right? You think Google Analytics, mm -hmm. right? Um, for game developers, this is especially important because it's such a dynamic and competitive field that you have to really understand exactly what your users are doing um, at any point of the game. Cool. So, all right. So, you've got a bunch of game data coming in, players doing stuff, maybe beating bosses or levels and stuff, and you need a way to ingest that and then send that on somewhere else. Right. Um, ultimately, you want to make sure that that the game developers and the data scientists on the team, who oftentimes are the same person, um, sometimes not, depending on how big the company is, can actually make sense of this data. Um, and so, I think BigQuery is the thing that makes it possible to. Um, to to examine these the vast volume of data quickly, but upstream, so that the combination of cloud, PubSub, and Dataflow are the things that 
that make it possible to ingest the data and transform it as it's streaming. Cool. So, all right. So it sounds like looking at the diagram, the first step is PubSub. Uh, so my question is, okay, why PubSub? Why, why, is this, why is this the first step? So you can think of PubSub as, as another solution for logging. Right. If you think about sort of the old school way of doing things, right, your your LAMP stack back in the day, every time you would get a web request, um, you would respond to the user and dump a record to your to a system log or Apache log or wherever you however you had your setup done. And so then you might go and you would have a, a, a subsystem that would trawl through the logs, put them in some kind of ETL loop, um, and every so often you would just sort of ingest the log. Um, put it into a MySQL database, and then um, and then somebody on the other on the other end would would go and um, look at the data to try to figure out what's happening. Um, the what's what's happened as we went away from doing having single stacks right to having multiple servers or microservices implementing many of many of the applications, especially games, because they're so vastly distributed. Right, as soon as you start talking about uh, players, ta- players playing in different sides of the country. Um, if Eric and I were playing today, we'd have to somehow communicate and synchronize things between a server that's close to Utah and a server that's close to to New York City. Um, you're dealing with a system that's not a single stack, right? Something is far away from that disk. So how do you get? How do you have a solution that looks a little bit like just very quickly writing to log? Um, so that you can process uh, these event data late, later, um, but that works for a completely distributed set of microservices or just just servers, um, and that's PubSub. PubSub is um, I don't know a silly example is I don't know it's like it's like email for it's like email or instant messaging for um, for machines. Um, instead of writing to a log, any machine anywhere in the world can just uh, put a message on PubSub and say hey. A player just killed a dragon. Done. Uh, from there on, the front ends can focus on servicing the users, and the back ends can just read those messages from PubSub to to um, uh, figure out what to do with them. Cool. So you mentioned uh, a couple times the three magic words ETL. Uh, I'm, could you explain a little bit what those are and what that means for for our audience? I'm I'm glad that uh, you consider the. the <laughs> You consider ETL the magic words, Francesc. <laughs> Eric, do you want to take this one on since you're in the uh, middle? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so commonly this is just extract, transform, load. So you've got data in point A and you want to move it to point B. Um, not Maybe maybe move it. Maybe you're just looking to change it. Um, and and cha- data is often immutable. And so changing involve, involves moving. But, yeah, so you're, you're going from... Um, in this case, PubSub to BigQuery, you're going to extract it from PubSub, transform it, and load it into BigQuery. But but ETL is, is traditionally more uh, often used when you're you know moving database to database or or file system to database. Um, anytime you're moving data around. Cool. So in this case, we could say that uh, the E in ETL could be Cloud PubSub. That's how you're extracting that information from all the all the data sources. That's right. Cool. And what happens next? So yeah, so this this moves us into data flow, um, and and that this is the T in ETL. We're gonna we're gonna transform the data. Um, you know, you might be asking yourself, why are we transforming the data? Um, there, there's a lot of things that we could do here in in data flow. You might be uh, we mentioned enriching the data, so you have events from raw events from a user. You may just want to uh, add a location that, that is found elsewhere. You have the IP address of the, of the client. You could transform that now into a geographical location. You could be joining the data against databases that you have to, to pull in additional user data to, to add more color to your eventual analysis. A lot of people are doing schema transformations. Uh, another situation you may hit is if you've got old clients running some version of the game, you have newer clients running another version of the game, they're sending different kinds of events. You could normalize those schemas in data flow so that everything that hits BigQuery is in the, sh- the shape you expect and the shape that's easy to analyze. So I, mean, I guess those are a few examples of, of what you're doing in data flow. 
Cool. So uh, that means that basically Cloud Data Flow, uh, what it's doing is just doing those transformations to be able to then store it in some nice way that you might be interested. Uh, what is Cloud Data Flow exactly? Yeah, so uh, Data Flow is a stream and batch data processing service. It's also a programming model and, um, and a set of SDKs. That programming model and SDKs were recently submitted to Apache and now are referred to as Apache Beam. Um, it's an incubating project, um, but we can get into more of that later. But the service itself is, a, as, as I said, batch and stream processing engine. You describe currently in Java, uh, very soon in Python, the transformations you want to apply on, on data. You, you describe also the sources that you're going to pull from and where you're going to sync or persist the data when the transformations are over. And this, in the case of Java, jar file is, is sent to the service. Um, and the service itself spins up virtual machines in Google Cloud uh, and, and manages all the complexities of distributed computing that are going on there, uh, including uh, ensuring correctness of, of, and fault tolerance. And then once that data is all uh, persisted to your storage system, in this case, BigQuery, we tear down the VMs tear down the job and report to you all the logs and statistics that happened during the process. So is it like MapReduce? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I could have started there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. So this is, this is Google's MapReduce system um, and also um, a more recent stream processing system, Millwill, uh, combined um, under a single SDK. Yeah. But what's really cool about it is that, and, and this is Keir in New York again, is that I feel like it works the same way whether it's pulling a single event off PubSub or if you're doing 2 million QPS. All right? it's You basically just define a single transformation. Um, in many cases, if you're just looking at a single event at a time, right, you, you don't even have to know how many events you're going to process. right? The, pu the data flow just abstracts all of that for you. Is that right, Eric? Yes, totally. And, and maybe taking that even further... Um, there are some really part of the reason we, we, we went out of building data flow because there's existing alternatives you know in the marketplace is um, the, the holy grail particularly with this gaming setup is recreating the session like you have all these complex events coming in from users all over the place in different situations they all flood the system and and making sense of of that in the aggregate is really tricky Dataflow has built-in primitives to recreate sessions and allow you to analyze sessions, which is typically ultimately what people are after here. Um, we move events from out of order into in order within Dataflow. Um, and, uh, and then once they're in order, we then can apply windowing strategies, we call them, to, to group those events. Um, in this case, I, I mentioned sessions would be really useful. But yeah, you can group them by a user session and then perform some analytic function on that user session. Like, like uh, you know, what happened after this event or how many of these events happened? What's the average of those events? And then that can all then be sent and persisted to BigQuery. Yeah, I'm happy to add my thoughts on this. Uh, this is Tino from uh, the BigQuery team. Uh, what Dataflow allows you to do, and, and PubSub of course as well, is um, it, it really changed the model of how uh, uh, developers look at their game data. Um, you instead of uh, collecting uh, kind of summary events, um, things like I just picked up a sword or things like I just killed a boss, instead of kind of choosing which events you want to uh, you want to collect and analyze at a future date, um, this kind of daisy chain of services uh, allows you to look at everything. Um, have a holistic view of your data, and that really allows you to to analyze uh, your game in a, from very very uh, different angles than ever before possible. Um, and the second thing that it allows you to do is uh, imagine what uh, the maps uh, space was before Waze came along. Uh, before Waze, um, if you had a section of the road um, and you wanted to figure out what was the traffic pattern on that road on Friday between 5 and 6 o'clock in the evening, you'd have to run a SQL query and it'd say, oh, well, generally at that period, it's 15 miles an hour. All right, let's paint it red. Now with Waze, 
you have a real-time processing engine that collects the data, pushes it through the CTL pipeline, and feeds it back into the application. And so now with Waze, we know right this moment that is a green section of the road. And you can do the same thing with gaming, right? You can adjust how your games work by feeding the data directly back into mm -hmm. the game itself, which really unlocks a lot of uh, uh, possibilities for game developers. Yeah, so you can really kind of adjust your gameplay on the fly depending on what events are happening inside that game. Exactly, exactly. Excellent. Okay, and there we've got we've got the E and the T. Uh, why don't we talk a little bit about the L? Um, I'm guessing the L then is BigQuery. Would that be correct? Um, the L, I would, in, in my opinion, the L is the um, the result of loading data into the BigQuery, and once data is loaded in the BigQuery, um, hopefully prepared and and clean and and nice to look at, um, you're able to analyze that data um, through kind of any pure ad hoc data scientist exploration mode, right? You don't have to plan how you want to analyze the data in BigQuery. It gives you the freedom to look at your data in any way imaginable, right? You can look at historical data going back several years. You can look at data in real time that gets fed to, through BigQuery, uh, through Dataflow and PubSub. And you can look at massive, massive amounts of data, right? So this, this holistic, raw data viewpoint is really enabled by BigQuery. You can start to understand. So I, th I think you're talking about the fourth step. There's a letter that we have missed. It's, it should be either P or M. P for profit or M for magic. Mm -hmm. I don't know which <laughs> one it is, but I think, but I think it speaks to the point <laughs> that it's not just about loading, right? It's, it's about, it's about being able to make sense right. of the data in the same place where you just keep it, where you keep the result. Yep. That's exactly it. Uh, and BigQuery doesn't require you to, to think very hard about whether you have keys or indexes or whether your data sets are too big. You just load your data into BigQuery and you use plain, regular, standard SQL to analyze it, right? Um, and, and because BigQuery doesn't require you to stand up massive amounts of infrastructure to leverage massive amounts of infrastructure uh, for your analysis, you, the, the doors really open up, right? You can do a whole lot um, very, very quickly with BigQuery. Actually, that's that's a point that, that could be made about all three of a, all three of the tools we're talking about here. <laughs> I think we're we're kind of in this in this nice. Um, in this nice level of, of Google Cloud, which is managed services, right? Neither PubSub nor Dataflow or BigQuery require you to, to provision much, right? They just, they're services. They just run, right? If you think about doing ETL in a traditional way, um, you have to think about the physical machines where this happens. Um, I still, I still vividly remember once decommissioning, um, decommissioning a mainframe. Um, it was a fun adventure of, with moving with moving a box on wheels and 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 several people from uh, from a data center into a truck. Like that was, you know, you don't even have to think about that anymore. In principle, right? That's just um, which is which in my my my, uh, my head is uh, magical in all th three of the steps, but in BigQuery in particular. I don't know if yeah you. You, you, you bring up a really good point. Um, th th there's this new buzzword that's coming around. It's actually an old buzzword, but it's it's seen it's it's become reinvented called serverless, right? You you see in this with Google Cloud Functions and uh, AWS Lambda, but serverless generally applies to really tiny little jobs that get executed without having to stand up a cluster. Um, PubSub, Dataflow, BigQuery is serverless big data. You you're able to analyze big data at scale. Um, and, and, and in any way you want in real time without standing up servers, right? Like serverless big data is really a reality today with these services. Great. Um, yeah, just to sort of recap on some of that a little bit as well, just it sounds like the, the combination of the three is exceptionally powerful. Um, and it sounds like, so PubSub for, for ingesting messages at scale, Dataflow for handling stuff in real time, like even even for transformations, but also like, analyzing gameplay and whatnot, uh, and then BigQuery for maybe more after the fact, sort of what, do we, what, do we, what can we find out that we don't already think we know or, or go exploring? Would, would any of you sort of agree with that? Yeah, certainly. I, you, you've de described kind of two, um, two ways of stacking these. One, one and, and these are the ones that Tino brought up already. Uh, we could ingest data, apply transformations in real time in data flow, and then feed that back into the game loop. Um, or we could also then uh, and, and 
um, not, not or, but in addition to, we could um, push that to BigQuery and persist it um, for for soon and 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 future analysis. Totally. And thinking back to sort of my, my days as a data scientist in in ads, which is its own kind of game. Um, I used to, I used to work in, in, in building recommendation engines for ads. Uh, what what practically happens, right, for you as a data scientist, which would be kind of the type of user oftentimes who is sitting in front of a big query interface, um, and you're you don't know sort of you're doing ad hoc querying. You're trying to you're testing hypotheses very quickly, and as you find things that work, you practically push them up the stack, right? You go and talk to the engineers um, who write. Um, data flow code, right? Once you find that, that right combination of sort of, um, uh, levers that need to be pulled, um, and you start implementing the things that came out of your ad hoc, ad hoc querying in data flow, you know, or if you're not on data flow, of course, you're, you're going from whatever it is your ad hoc, um, ad hoc solution is, uh, to, to whatever it is that your, your live code is running. Cool. So I was actually just thinking, so say I'm a game developer or, or some, some sort of application developer with a lot of interface interaction and, and a lot of data coming through, and I want to implement this strategy. Should I start by working on, say, the pub sub end? Should I start by just implementing BigQuery and starting getting data into that? Or like, how much of this should I try and take in one big go? What's, what's the easiest step? Should I go BigQuery, then maybe add data flow down the line, and then pub sub down the line? Or should I start with pub sub? What's, the, what's, my, what's my entry point here? I, I'm sure you all have different. We'll have yeah. We'll, we'll give you three different entry points. Um, I would say I would say for 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 a game developer, um, you it really de- very much depends on where where your data is today. Um, if you're like many game developers using App Engine for a front end, you have a fantastic option which is which is just cloud logging. You can say you can import or export rather all of your logs directly from App Engine into BigQuery or PubSub. And so I would say there, again, depending on how you're writing your logs, you should start with BigQuery because when you don't know exactly what you're trying to implement, you should you should start with the ad hoc solution. Look at all of your logs, see what you can find out. Um, the when you export raw logs, you have an ability to to analyze them very quickly. But because the schema are not applied, uh, because you're not enriching the data. Uh, you're not necessarily getting the the best out of the data, or your workflow is not necessarily great. It's a bit of a pain. And so, if you get to to a place, as I'm sure you will, where you are seeing some return on that work, um, where you where you're starting to get some insights about what the users are doing, right? The swords are good, um, pickaxes are not so good, right? Um, <laughs> right. That that's where you need to you know that's where you need to go to to um, to uh, the cloud console and say, hey, now let's 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 try this this data flow and PubSub thing. So you can start publishing your logs to PubSub, um, and then from there, bringing up data flow job to analyze them, transform them, apply the schema, um, and go to BigQuery. Um, I think you know your third step might be okay. Now that you've sort of taken stuff that you've been dumping to logs and put it through this pipeline, you've gotten comfortable. You can start publishing instead of you know, writing to logs and then sort of recovering that data from Google Cloud logging, you may just publish directly to PubSub. That's a possibility. Um, I think a very exciting entry point for for some of the game developers and maybe <clears throat> um, and maybe for website um, and services developers. Actually, really anybody who uses um, who uses Google Google Analytics. Right there's another direct entry point with BigQuery. Is that right, Tina? I was talking about the um, the the export. That sort of that there's a one flavor where you get all of your data already parsed and and, and nicely packaged. How does that work? Yes, there's a, a Google Analytics Premium is an enterprise level offering of Google Analytics, um, and it comes with uh, daily BigQuery exports. It was pretty sweet. I used it. I used it for the last um, Android app we developed, where we instrumented the app to report all the events. It wasn't a game. It wasn't a game. Um, it was an app for, for for booking rooms, but it was pretty sweet to just um, to just have all that data in BigQuery immediately, without any intermediate steps. Yeah, I, I think a lot of the gaming companies that we see um, start. So, so BigQuery is so easy to use and so easy to get started with. We even have public data sets in BigQuery um, 
that you don't even need to know SQL to start using them. Uh, we we pre-built dashboards um, for our uh, for our customers to you to look at. Um, it's so easy to get started with BigQuery, and that's uh, you know it, it helps you understand the shape of your data very very quickly in a very ad hoc fashion. Um, it's the, the folks generally try BigQuery first, and then as their pipelines mature, as they want to go more real time, as they want to enrich the data or create that feedback loop, they uh, start implementing inevitably uh, data flow and pops up into that equation as well. That's my take. I, and I think what's interesting about what we've said so far about how you, you set up these pipelines initially and grow them is there's no throwaway code. There's no decision that says, oh, this is how you prototype. And then once you reach scale, you have to throw that all away. And then you do it this other way, which is much more complicated and has fewer features, but it, but it can handle the scale you need. Um, the, the way you set up your pipeline for scale or, or, or for prototype is the same. And it's in both cases, it's fairly straightforward. Um, going, going back to what Kier said about starting out with like, logs in, in BigQuery or a, or a PubSub pipeline. In either case, data flow um, logic can be reused. So you can write a batch job on your BigQuery log export. Um, and then once you pipe that in through PubSub, you can apply that same logic, it's the same code, um, to, to the streaming pipeline. Also, data flow comes with a, uh, a local running solution. So if you want to mess on your laptop from a PubSub or from BigQuery, that same uh, same experience works there locally, and then you just push it to the cloud for the scale runs. Cool. All right. So unfortunately, this is a great conversation, but we are running out of time just a little bit. Um, I will I will go through each of you. Uh, if there's anything we haven't covered, and I'm sure there's a lot, uh, but you want to sort of highlight or plug, uh, please feel free to do so. And then I think we're going to have to wrap up, unfortunately. Uh, going by order of appearance, uh, Kira, did you want to go first? No, I don't want this to end, but <laughs> too much fun. No, but I, I, I'll say this. I think, I think the, the, uh, this notion that there is a service that allows you to connect things in the cloud, right? And just, it will, it will work like a logging system where you just dump messages into it. Um, and they can be recovered at any point anywhere in the world is, um, is a pretty amazing, is a pretty amazing prospect for me. And, you know, just in general, the, the, the pub sub, um, the pub sub paradigm in itself is, is pretty cool once you start getting into the, um, distributed, distributed computing side of computing, um, which is, uh, which is everything today. Um, and in cloud pub sub, that's just kind of delivered to you on a, on a silver platter. It just kind of works. Um, so I think, um, I would, I would encourage, um, I would encourage game developers, um, and really anybody who is, who is interested in collecting data from, from their mobile apps or website apps to think about how all the data from the, from the different endpoints and the different services comes together, right? It's, it's not just plain networking anymore. You got to have something uh, a little fancier. Excellent. And Eric? Sure. Thanks for having me. This is, um, I'm very excited to see what, what these game developers do. When you have uh, time to devote to actually developing your game and getting insights from your data and not standing up distributed analytical pipeline systems and babysitting clusters, uh, I think awesome things happen. So thanks for having us. Um, and I'm excited to see what people build. Excellent. And finally, Tino? Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Um, I will add that uh, if folks want to find out more about what's possible, I would encourage you to uh, look at a YouTube video um, of the Google Cloud Platform Next, the, which is a conference that we had in March. Uh, one of our awesome customers, Kabam Games, uh, they make Marvel games and Fast and Furious games. Uh, they spent about 25 minutes discussing how they're using BigQuery uh, and all the other services that we have. Um, and it's really, really interesting use case. They, they discover how folks make in-game purchase decisions. Um, what about uh, um, where is the most fraud comes from? Or uh, if they introduce uh, bosses that are overpowering, um, how do they discover that? How do I understand uh, when there are imperfections in uh, their games? And potentially what's more interesting is that uh, Kabam Games launches a lot of titles, and they're not sure when some of these titles 
it can be small or very, very successful. Um, and BigQuery, Dataflow, and PubSub allows them to not think about scale. Right? They built the same way for one customer as they do for 10 million customers. Um, that's a great luxury for a game developer. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you so much to the three of you for taking the time to share that very interesting conversation with us. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Francesc. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. All right. Bye, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Have a good one. Thank you again to Kier, Eric, and Tina for such a such an interesting conversation. I learned a lot about it, and I hope that you got excited about the whole idea of putting those three different products together to basically understand better what your application and people are doing with your applications. Yeah, no, I really actually liked it. I learned a lot, particularly about Dataflow. I hadn't really thought about what was possible in terms of the transformation aspect of it. Yeah. I found that particularly interesting. Yeah, very excited. Uh, let's see if uh, some of our listeners are, have some similar story of how they're using it. Maybe uh, you can send us a little bit about how you're doing it or your questions and comments about it. Uh, we're looking forward to that, as always. Absolutely. Uh, and why don't we go f- with the question of the week? Yeah, so this is, I think, an interesting one, uh, especially based on sort of what we're talking about today. Looking at BigQuery, um, and it, maybe it's something that you want to play with, but you don't have maybe a big data set of your own. Maybe you, yeah. you're like, I don't, you know, I don't have just terabytes of data lying around. It's not something I generally do. So are there data sets available to me that I can just get in and play with and see the power of BigQuery and see whether it's a really good fit for me? Yeah, and the answer obviously is yes. Uh, I've been using these for demos because it, it is pretty cool. Uh, you can basically just go there and start running queries on huge data sets. And we have a link on the show notes to that data set. Uh, it's somewhere like cloud.google.com slash bigquery slash public data. It's pretty close. Uh, something like that. And you will see that we have a bunch of them. There's like USA names. So uh, you can see all the different names and uh, from the birth that occurred in the United States since 1879, which has been quite a while. So you can like do analysis like what was the most common name for during a year or uh, in the 90s or whatever. You can totally do that. It's very easy. Uh, there's also some others that are actually surprisingly uh, surprisingly interesting. Like uh, we have all the comments, uh, all the stories and comments f- from Hacker News from 2006. So you can do a lot of really cool analysis uh, based on that. Uh, I know that the demo from uh, from Next yep. used the, these data sets to create things like uh, in what um, uh, what primary language people cursed most and things like that. Like there was Hacker News. There was I don't know if GitHub is here. There was some data there from GitHub. I definitely saw that. Yeah. So anyway, there's a bunch of different uh, yeah. different data sets, and you can definitely check them out. The good thing is that you're going to be able to click there and then go directly to the big query console where you can start yep. running your queries. And you can do up to, what is it, a terabyte of processing p- for free? Yeah, I think it's uh, either a terabyte or five terabytes. I, I don't remember right now, but it's it's a lot of data. Yeah, so you can totally do that. So it gives you a good chance to really play with it, um, get your feet wet, and maybe probably find some interesting things happening in some big data sets. I'm seeing there's a data set here for Dota 2. I'm kind of curious to see what's in there. <laughs> Well, excellent. Francesc, thank you very much for joining me yet again this week. Thank you, Mark. Uh, And I guess that since it's episode 30 and we haven't done it for quite a while, should we we remind people where they can get in contact with us? Exactly what I was trying to say. Yeah, I know. (laughs) You've been bicycling for a long time. It's okay. I understand. So, Uh, yeah. Um, So, we have a web page. GCPpodcast.com. And not only that, but cloud.google.com slash podcast now. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That absolutely. Works, so, GCP podcast to come. Uh, we are on Twitter at GCP podcast. Uh, on Reddit at slash r slash GCP podcast. On Google Plus at plus GCP podcast. And I think that's it. Uh, on Slack, on there Slack. is hash podcast. Yes. Um, and also, they can contact us by an email hello at GCP podcast.com. Great. Well, uh, looking forward to all of your messages regarding this episode and others. Yes. And uh, talk to you all next week. See you next week. Thanks.